So today we're going over an easy tremolo exercise or a basic tremolo exercise. Um, you can watch the video for free. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the exercise and then I'm going to give you a whole bunch of tips on how to play tremolo and some ideas on how you might improve your tremolo. Um, the exercise I'm using is from my um, ebook, 20 Favorite Exercises, which comes with notation and tab. But like I said, you can just watch the video for free. I actually have two technique books. One, uh, 20 Favorite Exercises with tab, and the other one is Costco Guitar Technique, which has hundreds of exercises and it's notation only. So you can kind of choose which one you want, but this comes from 20 Favorite Exercises. So I'll show you the exercise first, and then, um, and then I'll go over all the tips. So as you can see from the exercise, I'm, it's just um, it's covering all the bases, right? So it starts with um, a, just a continuous tremolo on the upper voice, right? So A, M, I on the high E string. And then the thumb is just going to gravitate to all the strings, including the first E string, which I'll talk about later and why that's so important. But let's just go through it a little bit more slowly if you didn't catch it the first time. So it starts on the outer two strings. So that's the basic exercise. So we're, we start on the outer string and then we gravitate our thumb up and then we go back down and then we bring our fingers in because tremolo pieces have all these things. Sometimes your thumb is up here, sometimes it's down here, sometimes your fingers are on the first string, sometimes they're on the third string. They're rarely on the bass strings, I do admit, but it's good to practice everything to get um, versatile and flexible with the technique because it's a difficult technique. So you're gonna to have to become a very well-rounded player. So let me give you some tips on how to practice your tremolo. Now, the first thing I'm gonna say is that you must have a well-rounded technique in general. Um, I have lots of students that will come to me and say like, oh, my tremolo, I've been working on tremolo a lot and I just can't get it right. And then I'll ask them to play like an MA scale, like a scale with using the MA finger. And, and sometimes they're not able to actually play that evenly. So that means that they can't, if you can't play a scale with M and A, then how are you supposed to do something fast and virtuosic like tremolo with those fingers? You need finger independence. So I really recommend that you practice all your scales with all the combinations like I am, M, A, I, A, A, M, I, I, M, A, M, A, I, all the different combinations, even some thumb and finger ones. So you could go like um, thumb, I, thumb, I, thumb, I, thumb, I, or even I, thumb, I, thumb, I, thumb, I, thumb. Um, practice all those combinations to make sure that you have dexterity and finger independence in your hand. So by practicing all your technique and having a well-rounded technique, most of the time if a student does that, they can play tremolo pretty much automatically because they have the control over their fingers. So it's not all about practicing tremolo itself, it's about having good technique in general. So that's the first thing I'll say is make sure you do that. The second thing I'll say is you have to go slow and listen carefully. Um, when you're playing, uh, you can't expect to go super fast. You, you have to be even and controlled and relaxed. So you need to be able to play tremolo nicely at this speed, because if you're not even and relaxed and in control at this speed, then of course going faster is not gonna be possible. 
So make sure that you're practicing it very slowly and working yourself up to a higher speed over gradual periods of time. You can do that with the metronome, which I'll talk about in a second. Um, uh, one of the things you should start off with, and my other technique book does this, um, is playing tremolo on a single string. It's really useful to play it on a single string because it kind of evens out the sound a little bit. You can hear if the thumb is uneven. You know, if it's ringing too long on one of the fingers. Um, trying to even out that on a single string is really great. Also, it's hard on a single string, so it builds up accuracy. So. Um, gaining accuracy on a single string is a really great idea, especially if it's an inner string. It's hard to do it on a, on a single string on, without hitting other strings and things like that. So make sure you're able to play it accurately on single strings with a consistent sound. And slowly, of course. Um, the other thing you can do is practice staccato on a single string. That might seem counterintuitive, but it's really good because it forces you to plant the next available finger as soon as possible. So when you play the thumb, you'll immediately plant the A finger. When you play the A, you'll immediately plant M. When you play M, you immediately plant I. And when you play I, this is the most important one, you immediately plant P, or the thumb, right? So making sure... Each one is planting properly. That's called se sequential planting, but it's also just the staccato articulation, right? That's really important because it's not so important that you um, are able to move your fingers fast. It's important that you are ready to play the next note. So you're, as soon as you play one note, the other one is in the place that it has to be immediately. So practicing staccato like that will train your fingers to be in the right place at the right time before they have to play. So that's a very, very important one. That'll train your fingers to have control and will train it to be in the right place at the right time and result in a lot of speed later on. Um, so that's the, that's the majority of things I wanted to talk about. Um, practicing a well-rounded technique, so your scales and things, so you have finger independence. Listening very carefully to the sound that you're consistent. Single strings are great for that. Playing slowly and evenly and gradually working up your speed, and then the sequential planting idea. Now let's just talk about a metronome for one second. If you have a basic metronome like this, one there's a couple of other things you can do. Um, gradually working up your speed, I write down the metronome speed, and then when I can do it nicely, I cross it off and then move it up one notch at a time. So over a period of weeks, I'll be able to keep track of where I am with that metronome, and I can see continuous progress. The more things you have checked off, the better you'll feel. Um, the other thing you can do is, is some exercises regarding um, simplicity in tremolo. So for example, you could start by playing just thumb M. Sometimes you need an evenness between the two fingers. So you set the metronome, that was like 160 or 152, and you set the metronome to the thumb and the M finger. And you just start playing that. Then, when you're ready, you can start throwing in other fingers. So why don't we start by throwing in the I finger. So in a traditional tremolo of thumb, A, M, I, it would be 8th note, 16th, 16th, 8th note, 16th, 16th. So thumb, so start with just thumb and M, then we'll throw in the I. Let's go back to thumb M, then we're going to throw in the A finger. So there it's going to be thumb um, 16th, 16th, 8th, 16th, 16th, 8th. faster, but let's go slow. Let's go back to thumb, M, thumb, M. This is very stabilizing. It's so simple. So you can just have the thumb and the middle finger, which are the two eighth notes in a sixteenth note passage, be very even, and then you're just going to start throwing the other fingers. Go back to thumb, M, thumb, M. How about thumb, I? Oh, sorry. M, 
from AM. All of them. It's a good way to practice because it, you'll you'll build evenness between these two fingers, and you can maybe put the other fingers on to like a reflex-oriented motion. All of those things are so important. That's a lot of ways to practice tremolo, and not many that include just playing tremolo. There's only there's only really the last little thing there where I was like really playing tremolo, and of course the exercise itself. But the ways that you practice tremolo. Um, are very different than just playing it, right? And hoping for the best or hoping that you're going to uh, improve. Um, also notice that I'm not doing the left hand at all. One last thing I'll mention, and that's it, is a lot of the time in tremolo pieces, it's the upper voice that is the melody, right? So make sure that your fingers are nice and loud and it's not all about your thumb. Your thumb is this big, heavy finger, um, but we must make sure that our fingers are actually bringing out um, and projecting volume a little bit because they often are the melody. So I hope all those tips help. If you wanna check out the book, there's a link for that underneath the video. Um, there's also my other technique book that has a lot more tremolo exercises in it.